Participating in mixed races can be a really tough challenge. So let's take a look at how a real GT3 race driver is handling upcoming GT4 traffic and what we can learn together from that. Welcome to Boonatics, the community for sim racing beginners and enthusiasts alike. As some of you have might already seen, uh, I've participated in a lot of GT3 and GT4 mixed races with one of my league partners, Sim Racing XP. And some of the races have been really good and exciting, and some of the races unfortunately have not. There is still a challenge for GT3 and also GT4 drivers um, around the topic of how to behave in a mixed race, how to respect each other, what, what are like the rules, what do you need to know, and what should you be aware of? And I thought to myself, well, let's just take a look at how the real race drivers in the British GT are handling that. So fortunately enough, I got a video that I'm allowed to use which is on board a BMW M6 GT3 car in the British GT. But hey, hold on a second. Before we jump on board and look at what was going on, I would really like to establish a few just uh, basic rules and inform you about like race etiquette and how to behave on track if you're sitting in a GT4 or GT3 participating in a mixed race. So one of the biggest, if not the one and only big misconception uh, from GT3 and GT4 mixed racing is that um, just because a GT4 car is slow and inferior in terms of like aerodynamics, they need to move out of the way and basically let every GT3 car pass like it's nothing. And yeah, like, like they are not even, uh, like they're just an obstacle on the racetrack to make mixed racing more exciting and to just couldn't be farther from the truth. A GT4 car in mixed racing with GT3s on track has every right to be there and every right to use the racing line like a GT3 car. Um, you can even say that a GT4 car needs to stick to the race line all the time to be predictable and make it easier for GT3 cars who want to overtake or want to lap them to not provoke any incident or you know lose a lot of time or make that a, a, a more challenging um, exercise than it should have to be. Even under blue flags, the car that is coming up from behind and wants to pass has the responsibility. And especially in this case, sitting in the GT4 car, you always need to be predictable, stick to your race line and not make any irresponsible, unpredictable moves. In a GT3 car approaching a GT4 to overtake or lap them, you have the responsibility. You need to be careful and you need to find a way to get past them without disturbing them or any other ongoing uh, battle for any positions or even, you know, sabotage your own race. Of course, under blue flags, no car is ever allowed to defend their position. But sticking to the race line still is important. If the opportunity arises, a GT4 can use the situation and, uh, for example, just make a bit of room, break a bit earlier or take a bit of a wider line to make it easier for a GT3 to slip through. But the most important thing really is to stick to the race line and remain predictable. As a GT3 car always has the superior downforce and more power out of that corner, it's also important to look at the GT4 that you want to lap and pass, uh, not as just a car that is in your way, but as an opponent on track that you want to pass as safely and as quick as possible. So always be sure that you align yourself next to the GT4 car before breaking into a corner to make sure there is enough room and to quickly pass him. Or position yourself in the corner entry behind the GT4 car so that you can take a tighter line and out accelerate them on the corner exit without any issue and without disturbing either one of you. So a common misconception uh, of uh, many of the GT3 drivers in ACC is actually that they can always outpace GT4 cars and that they are so much faster than GT4 cars. But depending on the racetrack and depending on the GT4 car, 
Um, this is not quite right because, for example, on Monza, GT4 cars uh, on average are just 8 to 9 or 10 seconds slower per lap than a GT3 car. And that means that out of some of the corner exits, you might have a harder time to actually outpace them and overtake them. So always observe the GT4 car when you approach it. Um, where is the weakness and where is the best overtaking spot that you can make a good move without losing too much time and without disturbing uh, your race and the race of the GT4 car. Another good tip sitting in a GT3 car is as well, use your flashlight. Map a button to your steering wheel and when you approach a GT4 car and you want to move to the inside or want to make any other move or intend to overtake them in the next turn, use your flashlights. Sometimes a GT4 can be, you know, really in his own zone and be so focused that he's not aware that you're approaching or wanting to make a move. So flashing your lights helps to get the attention and is like basically the only form of communication between two different cars to make the whole situation much, much easier and resolve that without any issue. A really important tip for GT3 drivers is never dive bomb a GT4 car because this can go really, really wrong and in the worst case result in both of you crashing out of the race. Every racetrack has different sectors and it does not mean that as a GT3 car, you can and you should use every corner, every turn or every chicane to overtake a GT4 car because it depends really on which sector, which part of the racetrack you are wanting to overtake. Some are better to do so and some other parts definitely not. For example, it's always, most of the time, nine out of 10 cases, a really bad idea to overtake a GT4 car through a chicane because it's always narrow, it's tight, and you don't have a lot of room to evade or give space. And just forcing yourself through in a chicane will most of the time for sure always result in you and the GT4 losing time or worst case, just crashing out, spinning and ruining each other's race. So always be careful, always be mindful and maybe check uh, in other race broadcasts or other onboards on where people are overtaking and also always pay attention to the briefing of the stewards and organizers of a racing league because most of the time they even come up with rules on where you definitely are not allowed to overtake GT4 cars and if you do so it will result in a penalty. Also, always keep a look on the big picture in the race because um, what I usually see is that many GT3 drivers start to panic when they get stuck for just either one or two uh, short turns behind another GT4 car is that they think they are going to lose out on something. But usually mixed races in reality, but also in ACC take longer. So you have more time to make up for it. And you always have to think about and be aware of that your competitors have the same challenge and the same struggle. So also the car, the other GT3 driver in front of you or behind you will at some point get stuck in traffic. So never lose sight of the bigger picture and focus on the whole race and on the outcome of the race rather than just one lap or, or one overtaking maneuver. But to sum it up, basically the most important rule is you have to respect each other on track. GT3, GT4 all have the same rights and everyone wants to enjoy and experience an exciting race. So please respect each other, give each other enough space and don't sabotage each other's uh, efforts in having a great result and experiencing a really cool race and have a lot of fun. And without further ado, let's just jump on board a BMW M6 GT3 car racing in the British GT at Oldham Park and see how the pros are doing that. So we are now on board of uh, BMW M6 GT3 car at Olden Park, sunny day, actually driving behind another BMW M6 GT3 car, right just after the pit stop and uh, they filed out back on track basically behind some of the GT4 cars. And now we can see how professional real GT3 drivers are actually handling GT4 traffic on track. And the first car is actually the BMW in front uh, reaching the GT4 cars and the nice thing we just saw there is that the BMW did not dive bomb into this first slide right-hander. He actually waited uh, for the corner exit 
to use the superior downforce and power to line up on the inside and accelerate next to the uh, KTM the GT4. And next up is now um, us on board the BMW in the braking zone, setting us next to the KTM, sticking with the tight line through the right hander and just smoothly going by. And um, here on the start finish straight, we again see uh, the BMW in front of us. Since another right hander is coming up, just, you know, flying to the right side, to the inside of the next GT4 and just easily passing him. And we, in our car, waiting until the right hander ended and just again using the speed out of the corner, easily passing the car. And now we come into the next section, which is a tight left hander. And then we actually see that there are two GT3 cars lining up behind a pretty pack of GT4 cars. And both of them, again, waiting until the turn is over to not disturb the line of the GT4 car. And we can see just first the GT3 Lambo and then the BMW GT3 again on the left side as the GT4 is sticking to the race line. And then we have this fast left-hander coming up that in most of the GT3 cars can be taken flat. But the GT4 car has to break a little bit to make the corner. And we on board the GT3 are just now waiting, seeing GT4 is sticking to his race line. We use our downfalls and our speed to go to the inside of the upcoming right sharp turn. And I want you to pay attention what's happening in front. We have again two GT3 cars lining up behind a GT4 car. So both of them did not dive bomb into the tight right-hander, but they are lining up behind each other, not disturbing um, each other. So that no, none of these GT3 cars is actually trying to gain a position or make up on uh, being stuck behind a GT4 car. They all respect each other while going through this turn and just waiting their time and on corner exit, going to the inside and accelerating out of it really smooth really well and we are coming up on the gt4 aston martin here before the first small chicane and we have to wait we can't dive through there so we just align ourselves use the acceleration and then just outpace him out of the corner coming up to the next little chicane following the two gt3s ahead of us and we can actually see again uh, both of the gt3s the lambo and the bmw in front of us are stuck behind another GT4 car going through the chicane and both of them again bide their time, stay close together and just wait for a good smooth opportunity which actually comes in this um, short right-handed bend where both of them just go to the inside and just out accelerate the GT4 car not disturbing the line of the GT4, respect him as line and we do the same we don't disturb him on his line, go to the inside for the next corner section and just overtake him. Following both GT3 cars in front of us, as again, uh, both at the same time overtake a GT4 car. And um, quite a lot of traffic is now coming up into this last corner um, that is then uh, guiding us through the start finish straight. So we have the two GT3 cars now being stuck behind a GT4 car and we are stuck behind a GT4 car. And we don't dive bomb here. So that was really nice to see that actually the GT4 in front of us wasn't really sure or maybe was even aware of us coming in, but we did not dive in. The BMW here was too far away, not risking any move. And again, beautiful to see. Just take the tighter line and then on corner exit, just use the power and aerodynamics and just push through. And again, like in the last lap, we see the, we see the GT3s on the start finish straight, filing to the right while the GT4s stick to the left, which is the race line for the next upcoming right-hander. But GT3s going to the inside, use the superior aer aerodynamics and power. And again, we just wait for the time, go through the corner and push on the exit to overtake. So it's really beautiful to see here how the professional drivers are actually handling the GT4 traffic without really irritating the GT4s and um, respecting the GT4s on track. And um, I've yet to see a single dive bomb. So we are now on the second lap. And again, a GT4 lets uh, both of the two cars through while we are moving on to the inside of this turn. And 
Again, like in the last lap, we see both of the GT3s, the Lambo and the BMW, have to file in behind other GT4s to, again, go tighter through the turn, use the power on exit and file through. So this just shows you how you should handle GT4 traffic. It doesn't matter if they get blue flags or not, but you have to respect them. They are using their racing line. They have every right to be there like you. They're in the same race. They're using the same track. They're using the same racing line. So make the best out of it to not disturb their race and uh, basically not sabotage their race and just bide your time, manage the traffic. The excitement of mixed racing is all about managing the traffic. And uh, we just saw here that's actually one of the first closer situations where two GT4s were stuck behind each other and the first GT4 was actually letting us pass and then we had to wait because the second GT4 in this case at BMW was holding his line so there was no room to dive through and um, this was actually now the first situation that was a bit closer but nevertheless we paid attention he paid attention and it resulted in no loss for anyone smooth overtaking maneuver really nice procedure and um it, it's just amazing to watch the pro gt3 drivers handling it that smoothly and i think all of it comes just down to a few things which is just know the track know which turn comes up and just manage it that way don't force your way through because you're afraid you're going to lose out in the next corner you should be aware of what's coming up you should know the track. You should know that, okay, after this turn, I can out-accelerate him. Um, I can file up inside for the next hairpin and stuff like that. So be aware of the track and what's coming up and always plan ahead. Always look ahead and, yeah, just always be aware of uh, how far away a GT4 is and how fast you are approaching him to maybe even come up with a plan to where you want to lap him without disturbing him and uh, without sabotaging your own race. And that's all about there is to say about uh, mixed racing in Assetto Corso Competizione. I really hope this in video was interesting to you and that maybe it motivates more drivers out there to give it a try. Mixed racing is really exciting and I enjoy it a lot with my official uh, Sim Racing League partner which is Sim Racing XP. We just started into season three and it's just such a tightly packed field across four splits uh, where two of them are racing a full mixed grid. And it's just, it's just so cool and gives a much, much deeper dimension and, and uh, you know, exciting experience when you're racing in a mixed field. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you haven't done so far, I would really appreciate you subscribing for future content updates as well as my live streams. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, take care. See you soon.